Hey everyone, uh, I'm James and I'm thrilled to be back with the Product School community. Uh, I've gotten the opportunity to speak to this community a couple of times and um, it's always a blast. Uh, I love the enthusiasm and the appreciation for the craft of product management. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to stand out as a generalist PM. Uh, this is a topic that is especially important to me because I am a generalist PM and I feel like I've uh, struggled at various points in time to figure out how to use that as an asset uh, for myself and my career. Um, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about what I've learned and what I've observed from others. Uh, hopefully this is helpful for a lot of you out there. Before we uh, dive into the content, I want to tell you just a little bit about me and my background. Uh, I've most recently been a product manager at uh, YouTube on both the creator tools and search and discovery teams. Prior to that, I worked at a company called AdRoll, now called NextRoll, and before that I did product at a place called the Climate Corporation. Uh, and what you'll notice here is it's you know three different industries. Um, uh, YouTube, I'm sure you know. Uh, AdRoll is ad tech and kind of marketing for SMBs and B2B companies. And then the Climate Corporation was focused on software for uh, farmers, so kind of a data studio for uh, farmers. So it's three really different industries uh, playing into kind of that generalist model. Uh, I want to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what we'll cover today. First, uh, we'll talk about what life is like as a generalist uh, PM, both the good and the bad. Uh, some of you might be figure in a place where you're still shaping uh, your career and deciding what you want to do. And I want to give you a sense for how to pursue a generalist path if you want to do and what that looks like. Um, and then, uh, then we'll dive into how to stand out if you're a generalist PM. You might already be there, maybe that was a choice, maybe that just happened the way that your career played out. And then what can you do to, to make the most of that, make that an asset for yourself? All right. Um, first, let's talk about what it means to be uh, a generalist PM. Um, so the first thing to say here is that it, typically a generalist PM has all of what we would consider product management table stakes and stuff that if you're a regular uh, uh, product school uh, attendee, you know all, all about. So high degree of user empathy, uh, great analytical skills and ability to kind of quantify uh, the impact of potential changes, uh, creative thinking about how to uh, solve problems or pursue opportunities, and then high degree of delivery and execution. Not only can you conceive of it, you can also figure out how to get it done. A great generalist PM does all of these things. Um, the key is that a generalist usually doesn't have a specific industry or functional experience. So this is somebody who maybe has done both B2B and consumer software, or has done uh, ad tech and FinTech and maybe even something else. Um, they don't have a huge depth of knowledge in any particular industry or area. Uh, I'm sure you've all run across uh, uh, these before. Um, and in particular, the major tech companies, so the Googles, Facebooks uh, of the world, tend to have a generalist model, uh, in part because they have such a broad array of businesses and they kind of want you know, product managers to be able to move. Maybe you're in Facebook's AR, VR unit at one point, and then you move over to the ads uh, unit for another you know, promotion step in your career. Okay, uh, first I wanna tell you what's good about being a journalist PM. Um, the, the great thing to me is uh, that there's such a broad range of potential companies and problems that are open to you. Uh, a really high caliber generalist PM sort of can kind of pursue their interest wherever that goes. Uh, and if you are uh, somebody who finds yourself kind of uh, with int you know various interests that are really changing, that might be a sign that you've got kind of that, that generalist call in you. Um, as a generalist, you also have less industry or technology risk. One of the uh, uh, PM managers that I've had that was most impactful for me when I was talking with her about this talk, she actually pointed out that this is both uh, a benefit for you within your career as, also, as well as companies, right? Uh, because if you're a company that is uh, taking a very you know, specific type, uh, uh, a highly, highly specific product management path, and the fundamentals of your industry change, maybe a new entrant uh, changes how uh, you know, the product is made or product is done, but maybe you go from a 
desktop world to a mobile world, or um, uh, you enter a kind of a new phase of competition, you have some insurance. If, you're, if you have a strong generalist PM workforce, you have uh, the ability to kind of pivot a little bit more easily than if you have a team of specialists. That same dynamic plays out at the personal level. If you, um, if all of a sudden, uh, you know, a, a new entrant comes in and kind of changes the domain of competition within a particular area that you're working, if you're a generalist PM, typically you can find your way into a new uh, industry, a new technology, a new tech stack. Um, yeah. And then last but not least, I think a great generalist PM uh, has an opportunity to be uh, even more creative and see opportunities that a specialist PM wouldn't see. And I'm heavily influenced here by a book called Range uh, by David Epstein that talks about how uh, seeing problems across different domains uh, increases one's productivity. Uh, one of the stats I love from that book is that uh, when you look at Nobel Prize winning um, uh, uh, Nobel Prize winners, they are more likely than their peers to have a hobby, I, whether it's music or writing a novel or you know some kind of focused work outside of their core domain. And and uh, you know throughout the book he he makes what I think is a very compelling case that uh, fundamentally being a, a, a great generalist is about increasing your ability to to solve different types of problems. And I think as a generalist PM, I know I see this all the time through my work, how uh, solutions from, you know, a different industry uh, end up giving me a clue to how so to solve something where I am today. All right. So by now you're probably thinking, why shouldn't everyone be a generalist PM? And I think there are really good reasons. If that's the good, uh, let's talk a little bit about the bad, right? Um, if you're a generalist PM, there are going to be certain roles that just are not available to you. Um, and I've definitely seen this within my career. So, uh, you know, I'll give an example. I, uh, you know, at one point was looking to move locations uh, and I wanted to work in uh, uh, San Diego and I'm looking at the Google San Diego office and they've got a lot of roles for uh, product managers for silicon chips reading the role and the job description. And these are, these are jobs that I'm completely unqualified for. I would be unable to help the team. Um, to be a great uh, uh, silicon product manager, you need a depth of expertise in, in how uh, uh, chips are made. And that's not, that's not me. So that's a path, right, that on some level I think is really interesting. Uh, I, I, enjoy, I would definitely enjoy learning about, but where I'm not gonna be able to be effective. The second thing I think that is a little bit challenging about being a generalist PM is that uh, oppor opportunities don't come and find you. So you, uh, you know, a really great specialist PM who has a, a great understanding of a particular industry or a particular uh, way that something complicated in the world works will have people, will have companies coming and looking for somebody who can do that specialty, and um, and they'll be very easy for them to be able to say, oh yes, this person, you know, if we need to build out, uh, you know, banking infrastructure, this person is is the perfect PM for us. They can read their resume and immediately know that, like, yes, this person is it. Um, and as a generalist, that doesn't happen quite as much. It can be one of the the. Uh, uh, challenges sometimes will be convincing uh, a company that you can uh, succeed in their company, even though you don't know the industry. Um, and and you know that that's uh, a challenge that comes with with the path. And then last but not least, I find it can be a little bit difficult to stand out from the pack because uh, you know if by its nature. Uh, almost anyone can find their way into being a generalist PM, right? There's no barriers to entry here. Uh, whereas to be a specialist, uh, you may need an advanced degree. You may need a certain amount of experience in an industry. There are certain things that kind of act to, um, to keep you apart uh, from the pack. Whereas uh, as, a, as a generalist, you have to find ways to show people that you are great at what you do. 
uh, that are that yeah that are that you have to, to be able to explain to people why you're unique. Okay, we're gonna spend some time talking about that last one, how to stand out from the pack if you're a generalist. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about why standing out matters. Um, all of you are here, uh, you know, listening to a product school talk, so you are clearly thinking a little bit about, you know, what's happening in your career. Although many of you might be trying to figure out your first PM role, uh, maybe how to get into it or how to succeed within it, and this might seem not super important to you. But I think it's something that you should be thinking about from the start because um, more often than not, even if you you know totally love your company, totally love your manager, you want to be thinking a little bit about what the next opportunity is going to look like for you. Um, as we move into a, a, a remote work world, there's uh, there, you know there's already lots of competition for product roles. There's going to be more competition in the future. Uh, you know, once anyone can kind of uh, hop online, uh, from wherever they are and, and, you know, to some extent do the job, uh, you need to know how you're going to stand out and how you're going to, uh, uh, be, be, be better than them, kind of earn the role. Um, and then last but not least, even if you kind of feel good about, you don't, you know, you don't feel good about the next opportunity. You don't feel like, you know, there's, there's competition. It's always nice to have choices. I think one thing that oftentimes, uh, makes me feel, better about the current role that I'm in is looking at other roles and being like, actually, I don't think I wouldn't enjoy that as much. And it helps me to kind of be like, you know what, whatever is like frustrating right now, or is, you know, a little bit annoying today actually isn't that big of a deal because I, I have a really good setup on all of these other dimensions. So this is, this is why you might consider thinking about why to stand out. So how do we actually do this? The first important thing, uh, it, for standing out as a generalist PM is is being intentional about how you select your projects. And uh, the question that you need to be asking is, am I working on the things that are gonna deliver the most valuable for the customers or the user and for the company that I'm working on? And uh, if you're not, why aren't you doing that? And I know that some of you are sitting there and you're like, well, listen, man, like I'm not the CEO. Uh, <laughs> I've been asked to work on this, right? Uh, and so I've gotta go and do what people are asking me to do. And, you know, to some extent, that's probably true. But if you're a product manager, kind of by your nature, uh, people, you know, part of the role is telling your leadership team what you should be focused on and where the most value is. So even though you might have kind of things you need to execute on this month, this quarter, you should be actively looking for areas of opportunity and figuring out how to get them on the company's roadmap and telling your leadership team in an appropriate way if you're not working on the highest value things. Uh, and I, I promise you that if you, if you, you know, approach that with humility and with tact and with kind of an open mind, that it will, it will be well received. Now, don't go, you know, if there's a huge opportunity and there's already a team staffed on it, there's already PM staffed for it, don't go and try to like take their role. Look for the, look for the blind spots and, uh, you know, just based on my experience across, you know, a bunch of different companies, it's it's almost never the case that every single area of value is like perfectly optimized. You should be able to find some way to put yourself and your team in a little bit of a better position to to uh, kind of expand uh, expand the their impact. Once you've kind of figured out like what what projects you want to you want to orient yourself towards, you need to think about how your work is gonna impact the product. So, you know, I talked a little bit before about the downside of being a generalist PM is, is that it can be difficult to show people how your work hits the product. And what I wanted you to think about in this part of the talk is what was different because I was there. And so you really, really, really wanna be thinking, uh, have an orientation towards launches, shipping, Right. This is obviously a good product manager trait to have, but it's especially important if you're a generalist being able to show how the product evolved because of the work that you and your team did and and to be able to quantify this. So you want to be thinking about the metrics. How do you tell the story in numbers, uh, particularly numbers that matter to the C that would matter to the CEO or that are easily, you know, understandable by outsiders? Things like customer acquisition or churn or revenue. Um, these these are things that help people understand, okay, yes, I see how this person was impactful. 
the good news here is that this this really dovetails uh, nicely with what it takes to be an awesome PM. So to some extent, it, thinking with this kind of longer term kind of career lens, how am I going to sell this opportunity next? Rather than kind of pulling you away from what's best for your team, is probably pulling you closer to what is best for your team. Because I think if a lot of us are honest, you know, when, when we get into the day in and day out, it can be hard to have a real focus on how is this launch going to move, you know, the metrics that the CEO cares about. And if you you know, you, this can pull you towards that mindset just a little bit. All right, so now we have our projects. We have uh, thought about how to frame uh, or, or how to measure their impact. The next thing that's important if you're gonna be a generalist PM is, is really thinking about how you're gonna talk about your impact uh, to people that don't understand the company that you work for. I mentioned this question before around impact, which is what is different because you were there and uh, the other question I want to introduce now is what is the scope of what you were responsible for? And you really want to practice being able to talk about these things because you're going to have to explain them to people that don't have any context. So within your company, people probably know the answer to these, these questions. Uh, they have a lot of context. They can kind of, they understand your scope. Uh, they know how impactful it was to have you responsible for this you know, particular thing that's really difficult. When you start to want to move into something new, you have to, to be able to phrase it in a way that, you know, your parents or maybe your best friend from university that's in med school, you know, somebody smart and capable, uh, that, but, but not in your specific context. And I, I think that you really want to practice this um, because it's difficult to do. Uh, and... Yeah, and then specifically with scope of responsibility, you want to be able to talk to like what part of the business broadly defined were you responsible for and which people on the team were looking on you to provide uh, product direction. So um, typically, this can be very broad. Sometimes uh, product roles are very oriented towards partnership or towards support, uh, but you definitely want to be able to say, okay, you know, these are the engineering teams that were looking to me for product impact. Uh, these are the other PMs that were looking to me to provide product direction. Kind of explaining, uh, yeah, the 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 complexity of what you were working on. We've kind of talked all of this through so far on uh, kind of a single project level. What projects am I selecting? How am I going to uh, measure the impact of those those uh, projects? How do I explain to somebody why that project was important or what was different because I was there? Now I want to, you know, kind of move one level higher and talk about how different projects or different career experiences fit together into something bigger. Um, if you really want to pursue a generalist product career, you want to be seeking out experiences that are complementary. So instead of moving, you know, from role to role to role, you know, within an industry, you sort of want to be looking out and saying, okay, um, how do I get an experience that complements the one that I have? If I've got a really great consumer experience, how do I find something with a partnerships angle? Uh, if I've had you know deep B2B experience with really complicated customer journeys, how do I find something that's a little bit more intuitive or fun uh, that shows people how able I am to solve problems in different domains? Um, this can take some thought to figure out how to do well. It's not always immediately clear how to do it, but I wanna give you some things to think about uh, that might help you see where these opportunities are. One thing I like to do is take a look at, you know, kind of my own team or my own company and look at what sorts of problems uh, are uncommon uh, or really difficult. Where are there places where actually only one person on the product team really knows how to do the thing or how to figure it out? Um, especially things that are growing quickly, but from a really, really small base. So not, not uh, you know, today, like mobile phones are ubiquitous, they're everywhere. Uh, there's, there's lots of different kind of mobile challenges that are out there in the world. You sort of want to look for things that, that are um, coming up infrequently. Maybe you're on a product team right now and there's just a whole lot of uh, angst around, uh, you know, audio, uh, particularly audio layered over uh, real-world experiences. And it, it, it's not maybe 
you know, P0 every day, but it comes up now and then. And when it comes up, it's really confusing for people. That's a great area to dive in on. Now, I don't know whether or not that area is the next thing to bet on. I, I That's not um, one that I've run into, but that's the sort of thing that you want to be looking for. What's in, inconvenient or frustrating, the things that only one person or two people on your product team seem to know how to do. And when you find those things, you want to go and see how you can become an a, an a like mini expert in them. I, I'm not talking about like, you know, going and getting a degree. I'm talking about the sort of learning that the internet has made, has made uh, way, way easier than before. So you go find out everything you can find online. And if you can't find uh, anything good online, you go and maybe make a quick explainer yourself to kind of show how to get started and seeking out a community that can teach you just a little bit more. And these are the sorts of things that kind of allow you to differentiate yourself from uh, from the crowd and and put together a, a career experience where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. I, one way to kind of uh, think about this is the quote that I have on the slide here that I really love by A.J. Liebling, where he says, he's a journalist, and he says, I can write better than anybody who can write faster than me, and I can write faster than anyone who can write better than me. And I think that's a really good way to think about it. You're not necessarily trying to be the best writer or the fastest writer. You're trying to be the best of both. Uh, uh, and, and that's how to think about some of these kind of complementary experiences. Okay. So we've talked about projects and how to select those as a generalist. We've talked about uh, and how to perform within those as a generalist. Now I want to talk about kind of even more the stuff that kind of goes beyond the core of the product job and how to demonstrate ability beyond your core role. So uh, one place in particular where I think, and this is a place really in particular where I think generalists have an opportunity to stand out. Um, Product is really unique in that it touches so many different parts of a business um, and you get to interact with so many different types of people. You should be thinking about your job as broadly as possible and looking beyond just the job description for areas that you are interested in where you can kind of pitch in and help out. So um, maybe you're looking to kind of demonstrate your ability to lead a team. Uh, you're not, you're an individual contributor now, but in two years or four years, you want to be able to be a team lead. Okay. Are you, you know, finding time to mentor others? Are you giving back to the PM community? Uh, are you seeking out opportunities within, uh, within your company to, uh, develop the product function and, and kind of show people what it's like to be a great PM. Those are the sort of things that will kind of set you apart as you want to move up the ladder. Maybe you want to get closer to sales in your next role. Um, are you spending time with the sales team? Are you facilitating uh, feedback between sales and product? Are you doing kind of uh, uh, how-to sessions to kind of make, make the, uh, uh, let the sales org understand how your product works? Those are all opportunities to kind of show your ability beyond your core job. And then one thing I just want to call out uh, specifically here is, is that sometimes these opportunities uh, are really, they, they come disguised as just opportunities to be, to be kind to other people. And so particularly as a, as a PM, you want to be thoughtful of how you treat other people. Almost all of the standout PMs that I know are incredibly, incredibly humble and willing to help. Uh, even when it seems like they don't have time for it. So that sort of orientation, I think, really opens doors that aren't available to people that uh, aren't humble or arrogant and don't have time for others. Uh, that's my presentation for today. I uh, am really thankful that you gave me the opportunity to spend this time with you. Um, if you have any questions or want to talk about this further, uh, I'm always happy to talk. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, or LinkedIn, or uh, I've got my personal website up there as well. And uh, if you have questions or feedback, I'd love to hear it. And thank you for spending this time with me today.